Hi, welcome back to a new video. If it's your first time here, my name is George and uh, on this channel we talk about different programming subjects. So if you want to know more about uh, different topics, do not forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications. In this video we will talk about a subject that's really really important no matter the stage of your career. Even if you are a beginner or a senior person, you should always apply solid principles. As you know, you can find lots of written articles on my blog coolprogrammer.com and you can also find the Java courses that can give you a good start in this world. Let's see, the latest article is about clean code because that's what we will talk about. So if you want to read the written version, go on my blog and uh, you can find it there. You can also find the link in the description. Let's actually start. SOLID is an acronym. An acronym that stands for Single Responsibility, Open Closed Principle, Lisk of Substitution Principle, Interface Segregation Principle and Dependency Inversion Principle. Let's take them one by one. The Single Responsibility Principle. A class must always have one responsibility. What this means? When you write code, you don't want a class that's a jack of all trades. For example, you have the class utensil, which has the functions cut food, scoop food and steer food. So this class will do a lot of stuff. How do we solve this issue? Is by separating uh, these three functions in three separate classes. For example, knife that will have cut food, spoon that will have scoop food, and class fork that will have steer food. The next principle is the open closed one. When you are writing code, you should always have in mind the possibility of actually extending its functionality. So it should be easy to add new functionalities, to modify existing ones. What exactly this principle says? It says that your code should be open for extension, but closed for modification. It's not always the case, this is the ideal one, but we have to make sure that we are writing the code in a manner that's easy to understand, extend and modify. For example, let's say you are designing a system that controls various types of machines. For example, one machine can cut wood and the other one can drill some, uh, some holes. If you design uh, a class called machine and you add these two functions, Maybe it, at the beginning it sounds good, but uh, imagine you have to add more and more machines. So as you go, you would have to differentiate between uh, these types of machines, meaning that you need some kind of uh, attributes that will signal you what type of machine you are operating with. And it will also be harder to understand what's written there. So instead of having one big class machine that will take care of all the functions, you can have one class that's called woodcutting machine and another class that's called drilling machine. Keep also in mind that uh, the example may not respect uh, not only the, the principle that's given example for, but the other ones also. Let's talk about the third example. And that's Liskov substitution principle, which says objects of a superclass should be replaceable with objects of its subclasses without breaking the application. What example I gave here? You are asked to implement a system that's tracking different type of birds. You first design the class bird with the function fly and then you are asked to design the classes duck and goose. After some time you will be asked to model penguins. Now you may be starting to see some design flows because the penguin is not flying. So if you extend the class bird with the function fly, you can't actually replace an attribute of type bird with the attribute penguin because the penguin does not fly. So how we will solve this issue? You can have uh, an interface bird and two other interfaces that will extend this one, flying bird and swimming bird. 
So if you extend this interface, you will not have this issue. Now let's get to the fourth example, which is interface segregation principle, which states that the classes should not be forced to implement functionalities they do not use. For example, you have one big interface with uh, four functions and your class should only use two. This should signal you a design issue because instead of having one big interface that has four functions, you can have four different interfaces and each class will implement what they need. I gave here an example with basic phone and smartphone. A smartphone should be able to install apps, make calls and also navigate the internet. A basic phone should only be able to make some calls, meaning that uh, these functionalities should be provided by separate interfaces. And now we got to the last one, which is dependency version principle. When you declare attributes in your class, it's important to not use the implementation, meaning that if you have to use a class of type basic phone, for example, you should use the phone interface to differentiate your class. Only in some cases it's advisable to have the actual implementation, but in most of the cases, keep in mind to not use the subclass. That's it with the theoretical explanations. Let's now get into the code. First, I would like to create a new package, which will be called single responsibility enter and now here if you remember we have talked about the class utensils let's take a look a class that has three functions cut food scoop food and steer food we will implement it Let's define the functions public void cut food s out cutting food public void scoop. food s out scooping food public void steer food s out steering food. While this may sound uh, good for some cases, imagine you have to keep coming with other functions to implement in this class. You will get to the point where no one will know what's in here. Instead of having one jack of all trades, you should have three separate classes. Let's implement them. First is fork, which will have the function public void steer food s out steering food. The next one is knife. So knife public void cut food s out cutting food the third one is spoon which will have the function public void scoop food 
S out scooping food and that's how you can actually refactor your code based on this principle so if you find in your project at work or at home this kind of approach think about separating the functions into separate classes the next one is the open closed principle let's take a look at the article for the open closed principle we chose the system that controls various types of machines in a factory let's design the machine class that will have one function and two separate functionalities and we'll see what design flow we have there first create a package open closed principle new java class and create the class machine let's have an attribute here string name and a function public void action machine and now we said that we want two types of machines for now a drilling one and a wood cutting one so to use this function the action machine one we would have to differentiate them somehow so we will have to declare boolean is drilling machine boolean is wood cutting machine now let's have a constructor generate constructor okay now in action machine function if is drilling machine then s out drilling if is wood cutting machine then s out cutting wood now you may not see an issue with this implementation because we only have two functions and it's easy to understand but imagine you have to implement for other 10 machines some functionality you would have to add another 10 attributes and then in this function you will probably use a switch and uh, do something else based on the type of the machine so to avoid that we will do the following define a class that will be called base machine which will contain the common things for uh, wood cutting machine drilling machine and any other type of machine that may come so here i would only like to have the attribute name and the action machine function so string name and the function void action machine which will be an abstract one and the class has to be also an abstract one also we would have to define a constructor generate constructor click ok and that's it the next thing that we will do is define the wood cutting machine and the drilling machine so wood cutting machine enter which will extend base machine and will implement the function by using its means and now we don't actually need to have other attributes that will signal what type of machine are you using create constructor action machine s out 
cutting wood. Next, the drilling machine. which will extend the base machine implement methods and we also have to generate the constructor s out drilling so now if you use this approach when someone comes and asks you for other types of machines, you will only have to define a new class and extend base machine. And in the action machine function, you will have to do your operations. That's why it's called open for extension, closed for change. Let's get to the third one which is Liskov substitution principle. We have our example with bird. You are asked to design a system that will track birds. This class will have a function fly. You design a duck and a goose, then someone else comes and asks you to model a penguin. Now, because the penguin does not fly, it will violate this principle. So to solve this, we will have to do the following have two separate interfaces that will provide different type of functions. Let's get into the implementation. First, let's create another package. List of substitution. New Java class and have the interface bird. That will contain the function void fly. Next, we will have to define the class goose, which will implement bird. S out. flying goose and the next one is duck which will implement the bird interface s out flying duck And the next one is penguin, which will uh, implement the bird interface. And now we have an issue because the penguin does not fly. So the abstractization won't be a true one. So instead of having the interface bird, we would like to define two other interfaces, flying bird which will extend the bird interface and will have the function void fly and in the bird class we will comment this function I will comment it because I want you to be able to see where the flow is Next, I would like to have another interface, which will be called swimming bird, enter, and here have a function swim, and we will extend the bird interface. Now, Duck will not implement bird anymore, will implement flying bird. Goose will also implement flying bird. And penguin will implement the swimming bird. So we will delete this. And 
and implement this swim method s out penguin swimming and that's how you design your code to respect the list of substitution principle the next principle is the interface segregation one so we have uh, to design a smartphone and a basic phone so initially we have to define a smartphone and we have an interface that will have three functions call browse internet and install apps then they ask us for a basic phone and basic phone can't implement all of these interfaces because it does not have these functions we can throw an exception there but it would be better to separate the functionality let's design that create a new package first new package interface segregation now let's have our interface phone with the three functions void call void install apps and void browse internet next let's have our smartphone class that will implement the phone interface implement all three methods and call s out smartphone making calls s out smartphone installing apps and the third one s out smartphone browsing internet now everything seems fine until someone else comes and tells you to implement a basic phone that uh, will not be able to install apps or browse the internet so basic phone implements phone now you can throw an exception in these functions but you have code that's not used and is not uh, good for your app so instead of having these functions in a basic phone class we will have to separate the other two functions into two new interfaces so let's have a new interface internet interface and app store interface you can also call them apps installing or internet browsing whatever works for you now for smartphone we will implement phone internet interface and app store interface and in the phone interface we will comment these two functions i will comment them because i want you to see how we proceeded and now we will move this one the install app into the app store interface next we will move the browse internet one into the internet interface and in basic phone we will delete them and that's how our code is a lot cleaner let's print something here s out 
basic phone calling. And we finished with this principle. The last one is a simple one. It's the dependency inversion principle where you have to make use of the superclasses and where you have to use the interface or the abstract classes, basically the abstractization rather than the actual implementation. So let's have a small example here. So let's first have a new package here, new package dependency dot inversion new java class and we will have a uh, class dependency inversion example we have a typo here just refactor rename and in this class we will have a function show example what this principle states instead of having smartphone smartphone equals new smartphone you should have phone import it if necessary phone equals new smartphone now why is this good because if you want to replace the phone with uh, a basic phone you won't need to declare or change things through your code you only have to assign something else to the phone variable so phone equals new basic phone and that's it if we want to instantiate another type to the smartphone variable we will not be able to do that without changing the code maybe in this example it's simple to just change but imagine you are in spring in spring the services for example are out of wire so you just provide the interface and the framework knows what to assign to your service. If you use this kind of uh, approach, the one that does not respect the dependency inversion principle, then you will not be able to deprecate a service without changing the code also. But by using the interface, the framework knows what to assign to your uh, interface and it's much easier. So keep this in mind. Dependency inversion principle was the last one. Keep in mind that it's not always possible to respect all the principles 100%, but you have to respect them as much as possible. And if you work with a class that does not respect some of these principles and it's easy for you to modify them, leave your code cleaner than you found it. That's it for this lesson. Do not forget to like this video, comment what else would you like to see in the next ones subscribe and turn on the notification for more content like this thank you